Окей, ви can start. Ви uh, uh, continue uh, our spring semester, and uh, today um, our uh, speaker uh, is uh, Professor Roberto Mussina from the University of uh, Udine, Italy. Uh, Prega. Oh, thank you very much. I was thinking how to formulate my thanks for this invitation. I'm so happy and so honored, and I wish to thank everybody, in particular Alexander, of course. And but then I realized that this is the uh, my uh, the sixth time I talk in uh, St. Petersburg, even if in this moment I am in my home. And uh, this, in this occasion, I went to St. Petersburg uh, for the first time. It was a conference uh, dedicated to Alexandrov. Uh, uh, you can see here some people. This was the first time I visited uh, uh, St. Petersburg. And uh, that was perhaps a mistake because I felt in love with, uh, with your uh, city, so I will fight to be in St. Petersburg again and again and again as soon as possible. Uh, also, I had the honor to participate to this nice conference uh, in honor of uh, Nina Uralseva, and that also was a great occasion for me, and I was so happy. And then I, uh, this is uh, the fourth, I guess, third or fourth talk in uh, Smirnov uh, seminar in mathematical physics. So thank you uh, for this last occasion and for all the occasions I already had to visit your uh, great institution and your uh, wonderful town, city. Okay, let me start. I will uh, report uh, Mm, I have something here. Okay. I will report on some recent results I have obtained in collaboration with Gabriele Cora, who is a postdoc in my university, the University of Udine, Italy. Uh, we studied some uh, problem in uh, differential geometry, namely, uh, we live in a, in a space which is the hyperbolic three dimensional space. And uh, we deal with uh, surfaces in H3 having a prescribed mean curvature uh, in general, that might be constant or non-constant mean curvature. This problem fits in a, a very, very uh, large, uh, very, very general problem. Uh, I've tried to state it here. Uh, so you can imagine the most general case. Uh, in which you have a uh, supporting, uh, let me say, uh, smooth uh, Riemannian surface uh, sigma orientable. Uh, you have a, a, a prescribed a smooth uh, map on uh, this uh, n plus one uh, Riemannian manifold. And uh, you are wondering if there exists uh, uh, surfaces, uh, n-dimensional surfaces in sigma having the um, prescribed mean curvature and possibly satisfying uh, some other uh, side conditions or boundary conditions or topological type conditions. I, 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 I uh, recall here um, this uh, reference from uh, 1831. It seems that the, in this paper for the first time, the notion of mean curvature has been introduced by this great mathematician, Madame Madame Sophie Germain, for half of her career, she had to write uh, uh, her paper uh, with a uh, pseudonym. I don't know how to say in English uh, uh, because, of course, she was uh, at that time it was not so easy for a woman to write papers in uh, mathematics, research paper in mathematics. This is, of course, too general problem. In fact, here I have a, a surely not complete list of problems that can be immersed in this more general problem. Uh, surely, if you prescribe um, k equals zero as a mean curvature, 
then you find that you are dealing with the problem of uh, minimal surfaces or uh, also harmonic, uh, harmonic functions uh, from given manifolds into sigma and so on. So minima, the minimal surfaces, the problem, problem connected to minimal surfaces can be embedded in this general problem. Um, the plateau problem uh, is one particular case of, of, of this general problem. I recall that the plateau problem, classical plateau problem goes as follows. Mm, goes as follows, uh, assume that uh, in R3, uh, there is a given uh, Jordan curve and you look for uh, surfaces, disk type surfaces that are spanned by this Jordan curve and that have, uh, which have mean curvature zero at each point. So the answer, of course, is unique from a geometrical point of view, and it is given by the uh, soap film uh, spanned by the curve cam. What about uh, the relic conjecture? Uh, this is for k uh, equals to zero, and uh, for k constant, say positive, <clears throat> The um, generalization of the classical plateau problem can be as follows. Uh, so you have a Jordan curve gamma, uh, you take a constant K positive. Uh, if K is not too large, then the rec system is small. Let me call it already small. Disk type surface spent by the curve gamma and which has mean curvature k at uh, any point. Uh, I called it a uh, small surface because uh, uh, if k is not too large, there also exists a large disk type surface, again spanned by the, the same surface, uh, the same curve gamma and having a mean curvature k at any point. And the Rayleigh's conjecture was precisely about the existence of this larger surface uh, uh, u upper bar. Um, let me recall that the existence of this larger surface has been proved by brezis coron uh, <sighs> I, I think that the preprint is about 1984. I don't remember when it has been published. Uh, this paper appeared uh, um, just a few months after the famous paper by Brezis Nirenberg about the Pohajaif, it's called Pohajaif equation. And uh, because, uh, in fact, uh, the, the, in, in some sense, uh, the approaches were, in some sense, uh, related. I also have to mention Struve, uh, which, uh, who was able to, to um, uh, uh, prove, uh, given uh, uh, an alternative proof uh, uh, to Brazil's corona results that includes more general also situ little, slightly more general situation. Um, but also I will go more quick here, Arnold, I mentioned here Arnold problem that concerns the motion of a charged particle. Assume that you have a charged particle here that is constrained to move on this, uh, uh, say, um, two dimensional surface. So N is equal to one. Uh, and it has to move on this surface because it, it, uh, it experiences a Lorentz force produced by magnetic field. And so um, in Arnold problem, Arnold suggests, uh, Arnold suggests to, to study the existence of closed paths for such a particle. There are many, many uh, results. Uh, here I list just few of them. 
uh, obtain them by very different, also by very different uh, arguments. Also, this, okay, in fact, the problem is not, uh, was not stated by Yao as uh, we uh, saw, but uh, this is one of the of a long list of problems that uh, Yao raises uh, in, this, uh, in this paper. Okay, so what, uh, um, which is uh, the uh, 59th Yao problem in the case of uh, uh, bubble? Let me state in this way. Can you see this uh, black uh, square here, or it's uh, just a problem of mine? I have I, my screen. I see some black uh, square here. Can't you? No, no, no problem. No. Okay, better. So uh, I will be mainly interested in this problem I directly stated in the parametric uh, form. Okay. Firstly, even if, uh, as I said before, my paper with Gabriele Cora is, uh, con uh, is concerned with bubbles in the hyperbolic space for say half of this talk, I will discuss uh, the Euclidean case because uh, you can imagine the hyperbolic case is a little bit more involved. So I will recall some facts about the Euclidean case. So first part of the talk. So the supporting surface, uh, the supporting uh, manifold uh, sigma is now the Euclidean space uh, R3. And I have a smooth function K defined on this uh, three-dimensional Euclidean space. And I look for S2 type surfaces, um, smooth surfaces uh, that have mean curvature, prescribing curvature K at each point. Um, the more, slightly more general problem of fight of, a fight, of a looking for S2 surfaces in R3 has been studied via different, from different point of views, surely. Also from the point of view of geometric measure theory, I don't report here. I, I, here I report few of the papers dealing with uh, uh, the problem of existence of S2 type surfaces in R3. I will be mainly concerned with the parametric approach to this problem. So I will look for parametrized surfaces in R3, um, parametrized by a smooth, hopefully, map from the sphere into R3 and have a mean curvature K at each point. Okay, let me comment very quickly the references I wrote here. This famous basic paper, of course, gives a first answer to the problem of finding K bubbles in R3 when K is a constant, because uh, we know that every embedded uh, K bubble um, is um, having constant mean curvature, non-zero constant mean curvature, of course, must be a sphere. Uh, also, those two papers are quite uh, interesting. Uh, I will recall them uh, when I will uh, uh, talk, discuss the hyperbolic case. In those two papers, the authors look for surfaces which are radial graphs over the unit sphere. So this is the two-dimensional sphere, okay? And they look for surfaces which are radial graphs over the unit two sphere. And they, uh, and they use uh, then, they write the problem uh, in some accordingly to their approach. And then they use a topological, say, uh, or degree-based methods. Those are totally papers in differential geometry, though. So I will not comment them because I'm not cannot be able to comment them. 
And I have to say that uh, in collaboration with Paolo Caldiroli, we have a number, more or less 10, I don't know, even more of papers. We, we studied this problem for a long time uh, because, uh, okay, mm, if uh, the, the, the existence of cave bubbles is completely clear, the problem of the existence uh, of uniqueness and classification of cake bubbles is completely solved by Alexandrov for when K is a constant, a positive constant, for instance, uh, the case when K is not constant is still, uh, uh, an un, in my opinion, not, not well understood problem. We um, made a lot of efforts. We obtained some results, but uh, a lot of work has to be done uh, when K is non-constant. Uh, we'll try to explain why. Okay, before uh, describing uh, the problem the, in a hyperbolic setting, uh, uh, so I, I will discuss the, as I said before, the Euclidean case. Okay, why with Paolo Caldiroli we uh, studied for the, 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 okay, as I said before, because uh, uh, there are several uh, not understood questions, but mostly because uh, the K H bubble, K bubble, H bubble problem in R3 has uh, uh, a variational structure. That is, it can be studied using variational methods. And since uh, we are variational people, we tried to apply our uh, knowledge uh, to this uh, geometrical problem. So assumption, K is uh, uh, a prescribed curvature, smooth, bounded, uh, uh, whatever you want here. Okay. In order to, the, to introduce the energy uh, related to the K-bubble problem, I have to the, uh, talk about the, the two functionals. One is the area, an area functional. The second is a, a volume functional. Um, so first uh, I introduce the area functional. In fact, uh, this is uh, quite an elementary object when u is a diffeomorphism, say, from this unit two sphere into R3. So assume that u is a diffeomorphism. Um, I can, uh, I will always in this talk, I will always identify the unit two sphere with the compactified plane via the stereographic projection. So I will always uh, made, make this identification. I hope this will not produce confusions, but okay. We know since we were so young that the, you can, in this case, you can compute of the, the area of the surface parameterized by you simply by uh, making this computation, easy computation. This is an exercise. Easy exercise to compute an area, but uh, <clears throat> from the point of view of calculus of variations of critical point theory and variational methods, whatever you want, this is a very bad functional. Of course, for instance, it, it is not convex. No hope to obtain a, a useful semi-continuity properties of this functional. But fortunately, in dealing with geometrical problem, it one can move from this uh, bad functional to a very nice functional, which is the Dirichlet integral. This was the, the idea to replace for this geometrical problem the area functional with the Dirichlet integral, which is so nice. It goes back to uh, the papers by Douglas, uh, Radeau on the plateau problem, but also current uh, and so on. So it's something that works since one century ago, the remarks, the basic remarks one has to do are the following. The Dirichlet integral controls the area and the Dirichlet integral gives you precisely the area of the surface provided that U is conformal. If you look at U as a function on R2, conformal, conformality can be expressed via uh, those uh, the quality which are written here on R2. 
Okay. And also, if you formally compute the derivative of the area functional with respect to u, then this coincides with the derivative of the Dirichlet function uh, with respect to u, provided the u is conformal. So these are basically the three reasons why the, the three um, reasons why the um, initial idea for current and um, Douglas uh, of the work. Okay. So in fact, uh, we will not use precisely the area functional, but we will use, uh, this will be a piece of our energy. The second uh, addendum in our energy will be a K volume function. Uh, so as take as before, just to start with, take as before, say, a diffeomorphism from the compactified plane into R3. So uh, the surface U of S2 parametrized by U is a sphere, uh, is diffeomorphic to a sphere. So it is the boundary of some uh, open set omega. Um, you can think that K has to be the density in a sense. Imagine that K is positive. You can think, you can see, look at the K as the density of uh, the material contained in omega. And uh, of course, uh, om the, the omega will be homogeneous if and only if k is a constant. Otherwise, uh, the, if k is non-constant, then the material in omega is not uh, homogeneous, just to think. And so if you want to compute the weight of uh, omega, uh, you have to uh, compute this uh, integral. Right? How to do it by using the parametrization u of the boundary of omega? Okay, take any vector field, smooth vector field, whose divergence is the density or prescribed curvature, as you prefer, k. This can be surely done. It exists. Such a vector field surely exists. And then they K volume of omega is can be written in this form. And since it can be written in this form, you can use the divergence theorem, which tells you that this equality holds. Now to compute this, we recall that the boundary of omega is parametrized by u and that uh, u is a diffeomorphism so that the vector u of x, this is the exterior problem. Uh, uh, do you agree this is the, some people uses this notation, but I don't, I don't like. So I use this notation for the exterior problem, product. Uh, this gives the direction of the normal to the surface parameterized by u at each point. We can choose if uh, this normal that never vanishes uh, is outward, out, outward or inward pointing. For instance, if it is always uh, um, pointing outside the set omega, then you compute this integral by elementary form uh, formula in this uh, way. way. This is a K volume. In fact, it is an algebraic k volume because if uh, the uh, vector u x, uh, uh, the normal vector here, is inward pointing, then you obtain a minus sign uh, here, of course. So it's a algebraic volume of omega with respect to the density, let us say, k. And now I forget that uh, I started with a very smooth diffeomorphism. You can define this function of VK on, uh, say, this uh, Banach space. This is the sphere, basically, with value in R3. And uh, for you, even less regular than when, when asked before, I will say that uh, this is the algebraic volume closed by U with respect to the density K, which is the prescribed curvature. Is it okay for, uh, since now? 
Okay. Take, for instance, the case when the prescribed curvature is a constant, positive constant, for instance. Okay, if you want to include the, to, to include the negative constants, uh, it's the same. Uh, just recall that changing the orientation of a parameterization has the effect of changing the sign. So if we deal with constant curvatures, we can always think to positive constant curvatures. Of course, uh, the case k equals to zero is totally trivial. and uh, It's out of discussion. So if you want to compute the algebraic volume with respect to a constant density, we have to take a, a, a vector field such that the divergence of the vector field is a constant. And the answer is, uh, uh, of course, in this case, Q of P is equal to K third of P, whose divergence is small k. And finally, we are in a position to introduce, to say which is the energy functional that allows us to use perhaps variational methods in order to study the uh, K-bubble problem. And the energy function is simply the sum of, of this Dirichlet integral, which is more or less the area of the surface parameterized by U. Then we have a number two here, which depends on the dimensions, the dimensional constant. And uh, here we have the K volume, uh, algebraic K volume enclosed by U. This is the functional, uh, the useful functional to treat uh, the H bubble problem. In fact, the derivative uh, via integration by part, this is a simple computation. The derivative of the energy is given by minus Laplacian of U plus this term. And in particular, it tells you that if U is not constant, uh, of course, constant functions are critical points for the energy, but uh, they are not uh, interesting uh, parameterizations of uh, interesting surfaces. Uh, if U is non-constant, and, it, uh, and U is a critical point of the energy, then the Laplacian of U is uh, parallel, proportional to U of X wedge U of Y, which is always uh, orthogonal to the surface parameterized by U, if, if, or it is zero. This is not enough in general to say that the surface parameterized by U has mean curvature K, but in fact, uh, this is true because uh, uh, this uh, lemma holds. I could not say who proved uh, firstly this lemma. Let us say that is uh, known. Uh, so if you have non-constant critical point, then you have some Euler-Lagrange equation, but in addition, U is a conformal function on R2. So that it's the Riclay integral gives precisely the area of the surface parameterized by U, but also people, uh, uh, geometers can tell you then, okay, in this case, uh, the mean curvature of the surface parameterized by U is precisely K of U, this factor here, at least in points where ux wedge ui is not zero. So at least in points in, way in which you have a normal direction given by this vector. Uh, but it turns out that those are the, the points where u of x wedge u of y vanishes are called branch points. And it can be proved that, that uh, there are just few brain possible branch points in this case. So we are so happy. We can uh, try to find the bubbles by uh, using variational methods. What should we do? First, this space is too small. This is not a reflexive space. So we have to enlarge the space to uh, a, 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 something much more beautiful 
which is a Hilbert space. This is a Hilbert space of basically functions from the sphere into R3, nice Hilbert space. But uh, then we have to try to extend possibly in a weak, unique way and possibly in a nice way, the energy to this larger Hilbert space. We should study the geometry of EK, what, or better, the, the geometry of the energy sublevels to guess if EK might have non-constant critical points. And then, of course, we also have to deal with compactness issues. Uh, because by studying the geometry of the energy, we can guess, um, we can try to guess uh, uh, levels, energy levels, just see that might be critical for the energy. But those levels C are critical if in that compactness, as usually in variational methods. Okay. Okay, but uh, as a matter of fact, when one try to perform this program, one meets immediately several difficulties, which are technical, but not only technical. The first, uh, let me write in, be, in commas, because this is not the, only a technical difficulty, it, some geometrical difficulty is, some geometrical obstruction is beyond these technical difficulties. But of course, I will not enter also, because I would like to talk about my result with Gabriele. <laughs> first, uh, in fact, we can move from C1 to H1. We can extend, uh, if K is reasonable, say smooth and bounded, we can extend, in fact, the energy to H1 and the extension will be, in general, only continuous and not everywhere ghetto differentiable. This is when K is non constant because when K is constant, uh, the energy is uh, very smooth, is in fact uh, um, analytic on this uh, space. This has been proved by Bente. Uh, in the 70s, let me say. So when K is constant, uh, this function here can be extending to an analytic way, in an analytic way to uh, the sobel space H1. And uh, while the extension is never gato differentiable if K is not constant, the reason is that H1 is not embedded uh, basically in L infinity. And uh, mm, okay, but let me skip uh, this. Uh, uh, this difficulty, which is one of the main, in fact. Next, you have uh, um, <clears throat> big troubles with palace mail conditions and with lack of uh, compactness. Uh, this uh, functional, let me say now, on H1 never satisfies the palace mail condition because of a certain number of uh, transforms uh, that uh, leave the energy invariant and uh, which produces lack of compactness phenomena. Uh, the complete classification of the behavior of palace male sequences uh, when K is constant has been carried out in this paper this is another paper by um, Brezis Coron, 1985. Uh, and so what, what happens is that in, for K uh, constant, so you prescribe the constant um, curvature, say positive, uh, Pales may sequences for this functional blow up in a finite number of points. And from the geometrical point of view, so the 
um, images. From the geometrical point of view, they um, produce a finite number of uh, bubbles that are spheres uh, of uh, radius one over k. Okay, there is a complete, a complete description of the behavior of palace maze sequences. The palace maze uh, condition is a compactness condition on the energy, while the situation for k not constant is totally difficult and I should say not understood up to now. Uh, at that time, after this uh, second paper by Brezis Coron, a lot of people, uh, good people, good colleagues, let me mention somebody, uh, Betuel, Ray, Wang, Struve, and uh, uh, Paca, and others, they started, of course, to study the K bubble problem for non-constant K, and uh, everybody, me included, were thinking that, of course, well, if K is not very far from being a constant, uh, then uh, perhaps uh, things uh, should go more or less in the same way. And this, uh, mm, we were, people were so convinced about this better that uh, uh, after 1985, a number of wrong paper have been published also in very good journals. But then with Paolo Caldiroli, we realized that in fact, the behavior of a palace maze sequences for non-constant curvatures might be very, very... Pardon? Pardon? No, nothing. Ah, very, very different uh, with respect to the case of a prescribed constant curvature. Here we have a list of uh, funny and terrible things that uh, um, terrible behaviors of palace maze sequences. Then we also have three papers. Here, this is uh, only by Paolo Caldiroli, in which we, in fact, understood something about palace maze sequences but under uh, very strong assumptions, strong assumptions on the curvature, prescribed curvature case. So in fact, we arrived in this paper to a uh, um, description of the behavior of palace main sequence but with, when K is non-constant and satisfies really strong assumptions. Okay, now I'm almost finishing uh, perhaps my time, but also the Euclidean case. No, uh, you have to. Almost, almost. Okay, my, this was is supposed to be a talk on the hyperbolic or the problem in the hyperbolic space uh, and uh, the hyperbolic space is far. <laughs> But in any case, uh, no, no, I will, I will, I will have enough time. Okay. Uh, you see, in a sense, I'm more interested in the study of this functional from the variational point of view, uh, in a sense, rather than to prove very to prove existence or non-existence of K bubbles. Okay. What can we say about the dysfunctional? Uh, okay, if uh, take as uh, the, first, the simplest k, k is, is a prescribed curvature, is constant prescribed curvature, say positive. Then we know by from Alexander they, that in this case, k bubbles are spheres of radius one over k everywhere placed uh, in the space. So this is uh, by Alexandrov theorem. What does it mean? It means that those spheres can be parametrized by functions u hmm? can be parametrized by functions u Uh, which are critical points of the energy. 
it's quite easy to find the explicit uh, uh, the inverse. U is the inverse of the stereographic projection from the North Pole, say, for example. Uh, one can wonder which kind uh, of critical point is U. Uh, U must be a critical point for the energy, which, uh, which um, um, can you compute its Morse index? Uh, yes, uh, U is more or less a mountain pass, uh, some kind of mountain pass uh, critical point. Or if you prefer U, any conformal, um, any conformal and embedded parameterization of the sphere of any sphere or of radius one over k is a least energy critical point for the energy function I wrote here. It means that it minimizes the energy on the Nehari manifold. The Nehari manifold is the set of functions u in H1, not constant, such that this equality all. It is a, so nk is a constraint, but which is a natural constraint. This is positive and conformal parameterization of uh, spheres of appropriate radius achieves this. Uh, in femum. So this is a variation, a characterization. What about the existence, non-existence results? So let me go quickly. Uh, for non-constant curvatures, uh, those three points contains, in those three points are summarized some of the results in collaboration with Paolo Caldioli. We have some existence result about, um, we have existence results under those two assumptions on K in particular, notice that this is very strong assumptions plus other assumptions. We can prove existence results, but we also can prove non-existence results also, even in case when the prescribed curvature is a small perturbation of a constant. In contrast, uh, we can prove existence results when uh, the prescribed curvature is a small perturbation of a constant, but in case when the small perturbation is given by a function phi, which has a good critical point. I will skip those um, results for k non-constant because I'm more interested in this characterization of k bubbles for the Euclidean case. Ah, finally, I can't talk about the hyperbolic case. So we'll discuss now the same problem, but in a hyperbolic setting. And I will go more and more quickly. Because at the beginning, it seems that, OK, the uh, hyperbolic K-bubble problem is similar to the uh, Euclidean one. And uh, in a sense, uh, this is true. But at some point, quite soon, one can re immediately realize that the two problems are totally different. And in fact, I can say very few things about this hyperbolic problem. And I will try, I will like to, un to understand something more. So <clears throat> I will follow the um, scheme of the Euclidean case. So first, uh, I will say first, I will try to say firstly, which is the energy I have to use to uh, to find the solution of this K-bubble problem. And here is a misprint in H3, okay? This is always H. To do this first, I have to say which is the model, I have, what is the hyperbolic space? Three-dimensional space, okay. You can use different uh, models for the hyperbolic space. All the models are um, uh, isometric, so you can look like you can choose the model you like 
for your uh, for your uh, goals and uh, we choose to, to to take as model for the hyperbolic space the three dimensional upper half space so this is the Euclid <laughs> three okay and I take as a model as a set the half space last coordinate positive in any point of uh, the, the uh, half, upper half space, the tangent space finally of my Riemannian manifold, this will be a Riemannian manifold, uh, Riemannian manifold is given by uh, this linear space R3, but in R3, I choose a different uh, scalar product. So I, I obtain a different uh, uh, Riemannian structure on the upper half space and uh, uh, the hyper space with this Riemannian structure is the hyperbolic space H3. Uh, then one compute uh, from this, one compute the volume form, uh, the volume hyperbolic volume form uh, is related to the Euclidean one simply by this uh, equality. Once we have this, we can easily compute the area of a S2 type surface parametrized by diffeomorphism U. Now, if U is a diffeomorphism from the sphere into the hyperbolic space, and we use this model for the hyperbolic space, then the area of the surface parametrized by U is of course given by this integral in fact, this integral is nothing but by okay. So we have precisely the same formula, but now we use in the tangent space at each point of the Euclidean space the the appropriate norm. And as we did in the Euclidean case we will replace the bad area functional with this, let me call it Tiricle hyperbolic functional. Next, we have to compute the hyperbolic volume of the, uh, the region omega included, included by the surface parameterized by U. So we want to compute what we want to compute the integral of a omega k of p, of course, a hyperbolic volume of this. And uh, this is, as you said, written here, given by this formula, I do prefer Euclidean formulas. So I only have to compute this formula to, to this integral, but I wish to compute it via the parametrization U of the boundary of omega. So what I should do, I should have, I have to write this as, the, as a divergence of a vector field Q. And then as in the Euclidean case, I just have to apply the divergence theorem and so on and so on. And at the end, I get up with this uh, uh, formula. The K volume in this hyperbolic case can be computed via this integral, which is formally precisely the same as in the Euclidean case, but now the vector field Q solves this uh, differential equation. Okay. You can see the, the history in the story in the Euclidean case was so long, but now we can run a little bit because we are already in position to introduce the total energy. Okay, the, okay, the volume functional, okay, hyperbolic volume functional is, it seems that it is the same. The total energy is given by this uh, hyperbolic Dirichlet integral 
plus dimensional constant, hyperbolic, algebraic, enclosed volume with bait K. This is uh, the functional we need because if we compute the derivative uh, or the, the differential, as you prefer, of this functional with respect to you, of course, uh, via integration by parts again uh, against uh, test functions and so on, uh, you end up uh, with this expression for the differential of the energy. And uh, this expression can be written in the following uh, form. You can understand why I choose to, to spend some time for the Euclidean case because formulas for the hyperbolic case are so long. In any case, what can we find here? Here we find this, which is uh, related to the Riemannian uh, structure of the Hilbert space. And then we have a differential operator here and the curvature term here. The differential operator here involves uh, some functions we call the capital G. Uh, which is a function of six variables, uh, if you wish, because u basically is a function from two variables into three variables. So it's Jacobian is a three times two matrix. And uh, uh, basically the transpose of the Jacobian is what we called here gradient of u, more or less. Okay, so it has a six coordinates and G is, um, has values in R3. The expression of uh, each of the coordinates of the function capital G here involves uh, the Christoffel symbols of the Riemannian surface, the Riemannian manifold the H3. Don't mind what are uh, the, what are the Christoffel symbols but people in differential geometry says that this is the levi chibita connection along you computed at you. So what we get up, and this lemma is proved in the paper by, in collaboration with Gabriele Cora, is that any non-constant critical point for the energy on one hand, solves this differential equation. On the other hand, it has conformal as a function on the sphere. And uh, those things together give that uh, the surface parameterized by u has mean curvature k of u at each point apart from branch points. But also it holds that branch points are few. So we are almost have solved our geometrical problem if we find critical points for this energy function. Now, things seems to go very similarly to the Euclidean case, but let me show, let me compare the energy in the Euclidean case, this is in light gray, with the general energy in the hyperbolic case in the simplest situation, which is the case when K, the prescribed curvature is a constant. The volume form in the hyperbolic case is this one. And you can see that the total energy in the hyperbolic case is the sum of a Dirichlet integral, which is a functional homogeneous of degree zero in U plus some other term, this volume, which is again homogeneous of degree zero in U. It means that EK of lambda U is equal to AKU for any lambda positive, say. This depends on the geometrical factor, which is well known, quite elementary. 
it, uh, if you take a domain uh, uh, omega, a set omega in the hyperbolic space and you dilate it, then you obtain um, uh, lambda omega, which has the same volume and the same area than the starting object omega. In the Euclidean case, this was homogeneous of degree two, and this was homogeneous of degree three, change, uh, change sign, uh, sign changing functional. So that was the reason why we had a, more or less a mountain pass critical points. In the hyperbolic case, it turns out that the, uh, because of this invariance, the Nehari manifold in the hyperbolic case for k constant is all, uh, okay, even if you extend uh, the full space mm, but uh, not, uh, the, 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 it includes all the functions, admissible functions, not constant functions. So, uh, because in general you always exclude constant functions. So, the Nehari manifolds is, gives is gives you the full space, and of course the infimum and also the infimum of the energy on the Nehari manifold in the hyperbolic case is zero, and of course it is not achieved. Never for any constant k. More differences is no K bubble exists if the prescribed in the hyperbolic case, if the constant prescribed constant is less or equal than one. This is very classical and known, uh, in, for instance, in differential geometry. It can be proved to be a maximum principle. If K is greater than one, then in fact, the only K bubbles are geometrically spheres of some hyperbolic radius place, placed somewhere in the upper alpha space. So this is a sphere. <laughs> and the uh, uh, spheres, uh, hyperbolic spheres uh, of some uh, radius uh, rho are in fact uh, Euclidean spheres, spheres of some other radius R, capital R, don't mind, don't, but are spheres in any case. The problem is that because of the facts I said to you, the one slide uh, in, in the previous slide about the Nehani manifold, I had no idea of the variational nature of, of um, hyperbolic spheres of um, the correct radius as critical points of the energy. What does it mean? It means that I know that uh, uh, there are parametrizations or spheres that uh, is, are critical point of the energy, but I have no idea about uh, their variational characterization, about uh, their Morse index and so on. Okay, now what we did with Gabriele. We started, as the title of this talk was trying to say, my God, I'm in late. No, not, not so much. <laughs> okay. okay, almost, almost done. Uh, of course, formulas in the hyperbolic case I'm, are so long that I cannot, I cannot enter in any detail, but I, at least I can state a theorem, okay? Now, what we did in our paper in Calvar with Gabriele Cora. We start from the K bubble problem in a hyperbolic setting, of course, uh, for, uh, for K constant. And of course, we need to start with a constant greater than one, otherwise uh, no K bubble exists. Okay. We know, in contrast, we know that if K is greater than one, then K bubble exists. They are critical points of an unknown nature of an energy functional. And uh, we can find parameterization that are solution of this terrible 
system of differential equations. Then we use the invariances of this problem P with respect respect a nine dimensional group of transforms. Okay, we have, uh, this is the same as in Euclidean space, more or less. We have a six dimensional, so a group of transforms that uh, acts on the set of parameters. Uh, recall that we use a set of parameters, the sphere, Okay, we have a group of dimension six of transforms here that leave this equation invariant. But here we have a two plus one more transforms that are the hyperbolic uh, translations in our, uh, uh, the hyperbolic translations. More precisely, we can move points horizontally, or we can take a point and dilate it. This is also a hyperbolic, uh, it's called sometimes hyperbolic translation. So what we do, we take an explicit critical point, uh, a criti explicit critical point of the energy, uh, this capital U. This capital U parameterizes a sphere of the correct uh, uh, hyperbolic radius. It has hyperbolic curvature kappa. This is kappa. Then we move along around the space uh, this uh, explicit uh, bubble using those nine uh, transforms. And of course, uh, since uh, this equation is uh, invariant with respect uh, to those nine transforms, uh, I obtained a nine dimensional manifold of solutions to the problem P. And all the solutions here in blue, green, blue, each point here is a solution, a conformal solution of this problem, and it is a capital, a K bubble. This M is a smooth sum manifold, say, of C2, of, of some, it's a smooth nine dimensional manifold. And in particular, it has a tangent space at each point. With Gabriele, we give uh, an explicit formula for <laughs> the tangent space. And what, we is what, what is important that we split it, the main idea to help us was to split the, this nine dimensional tangent space into two parts. Functions in the blue set are pointwise orthogonal to Omega. Omega is the inverse of the stereographic projection. It parameterizes a sphere of radius one. The, while functions here are pointwise uh, say a parallel to Omega. Okay. Okay. Here is our theorem. So since any function in the nine dimensional manifold is a K bubble, hyperbolic K bubble solving the, the system P, then uh, simply by simple computation, by differentiating uh, equation P with respect to lambda, with respect to Mabius transform, those are six, and with respect to Q, which moves in a two-dimensional space, one can see that every tangent direction to this nine-dimensional manifold solves some linear equation. This is simply obtained by, simply, 
obtained by linearizing problem P at the bubble U. You obtain this terrible system. You can see I cannot write it explicitly. G had a, quite an involved form, and here you have the derivative of, of your form. So this linear problem has at least nine solution, uh, of course, uh, nine linearly dependent, uh, independent solution. And finally, it took 30 pages in the, to prove this theorem about the non-degeneracy of uh, those uh, solutions. Now, the theorem here might be no, so might look not so interesting, but in fact, it has uh, several consequences. I will uh, uh, just mention the fact that using this non-degeneracy result, we can prove the existence of uh, K-bubbles in a perturbative uh, setting. I mean, at least when the prescribed curvature is a small perturbation of a constant uh, curvature, K greater than one, under suitable assumptions about the function capital K, of course. Um, this is uh, an application which gives and uh, slightly improves uh, the result we proved here in collaboration with Caldiroli in the Euclidean case. Of course, computations uh, for the non-degeneracy and for this perturbative existence results in the Elbertian uh, um, hyperbolic case are much, much more difficult than the Euclidean one. And what was crucial here in the hyperbolic case were precisely the splitting of the tangent space to two parts, one orthogonal and one pointwise. Uh, also, I should say that we met in proving this theorem some, I cannot, of course, not even write them, my, but I, we met some um, problems for functions defined on the sphere that I'm sure that might have some uh, application in concrete uh, different problem in differential geometry. That's all I wish to thank you for and uh, apologize for the delay, if I have. No. You have no delay. It is in the uh, Russian in, style. In, so in, in, in the in the bounds. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but usually, I try to 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 stop five minutes before. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, please uh, questions uh, or comments. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a difficult because. Okay. No. Those are, uh, I mean, uh, uh, those are concrete problems. They they come. They can. One, uh, I, I do like those kinds of problems because because one can be try to imagine bubbles. Uh, running here and there, but I should say that formulas also in the Euclidean case are always so long and unusual that it's quite difficult to to be more, to, to show computations. Uh, in any okay. case, one can look at... No, I uh, see. Uh, no, the, uh, the idea should be, uh, ideas uh, should be shown. Uh, first of all, and uh, only for more involved persons, uh, the concrete formulas are uh, important. Yeah, but... uh, well, uh, okay, if uh, no uh, questions, uh, let's uh, thank uh, the speaker. I have to thank you. I have to thank you. I, um, and uh, well,